Well I've got a small job here which uh, a friend of mine has uh, asked me to do for him. It's really really quite simple. All it is is just a small shaft with two 12mm threads on either end. It's for his motorcycle, a modification to his crash bars. It's a simple job uh, but the only problem is my lathe is an imperial lathe and this is a metric thread and it needs to be screw cut. Now my lathe is only a small boxford um, but uh, I can cut uh, metric threads on it by using a special uh, gear train. So what's really a, a simple job is a little bit involved because my boxer does not it does not have a um, a gearbox, just a gear train. So it means changing the gear train from the one which I've got on at the moment which I use for fine feed and put a series of gears on which enable me to cut the um, 12mm thread. There's a view of my uh, Boxford. Served me well for, for many years. Does everything I want. I don't need anything else. It's it's uh, it's a good lathe. It can, as you can see here, it's it's rigged up for uh, for the fine feed for general turning. This is what I normally use. So what I need to do now really is uh, get the um, the shafts turned and prepared for screw cutting and then I'll have to dismantle all this and then put the um, the the gear train on for cutting metric threads which involves using a 127 tooth by 100 uh, intermediate gear this is a special gear which you need on an imperial lathe to enable you to cut um, metric threads and I'm going to cut 1.75 millimeter pitch and uh, there you can see it's 56 uh, 56 and then there's an 80 but there's 127 and 100 teeth uh, intermediate gear needed just now making sure the the piece uh, piece of steel is running true prior to machining the diameter to 12 millimeter I'm going to machine all the four um, ends on these two pieces before screw cutting. I shall screw cut these separately because otherwise it will mean uh, disassembling the gear train which I've set to, for fine feed at the moment as this uh, lathe has no gearbox and then when the uh, diameters are all finished I shall set the gear train up for uh, metric I've just marked it in blue and now I'm scribing the uh, length with the set of uh, Jenny calipers to the, the length it needs to be turned down to. And now I'll just move the, uh, the tool and score a line to the finished length. Now I'll just uh, check the uh, the diameter and see how much is to come off. I think this is a 16 millimeter diameter uh, bar. Yeah, 16 mil. So we've got to two millimeter aside to come off. And just spray a drop of uh, coolant on to help the tool. Don't have any running coolant on this uh, lathe. It's uh, far too messy. I did have a pump and sump, but uh, I've not used that for years. I find this method uh, easier and less uh, less messy. This uh, EN16, which uh, I'm machining, is uh, is a low alloy manganese molybdenum steel. Um, it offers high tensile um, and strength uh, properties. It, uh, it can also be hardened uh, and welded and it's, it's it's not too bad to machine either it's quite versatile now 
And we're just now on the finishing cut to the uh, final diameter. I'm not leaving a groove uh, against the uh, shoulder so that the threading tool can uh, run into the uh, to the gap. Normally I just withdraw the tool as it approaches the shoulder. I've always done this. Um, I never bother with a, a groove unless it's absolutely necessary. Well that's 12mm now, that's the uh, final size. I'm just, uh, just three more to do now. As I previously mentioned, I'm going to machine all the ends first and then, then screw cut them uh, afterwards because um, it means just having to take the fine feed gears out as this lathe has no gearbox and uh, it's too much of a faff really to just dis disassemble the gear tray and set it up to screw cut just one end. It's, it's far easier to machine them all and just to make sure that they're running true when I come to, uh, to screw cut them. I'll just now uh, put uh, a chamfer on the end here. And then we're ready to, um, to get on with the other uh, three ends. Take the sharp edge off the shoulder. Yeah, not too bad. The finish is quite good. Yeah, I'm satisfied with that. Now here are the gears for the metric uh, train gear train. This is uh, a 56 tooth, but for some reason it's being marked 46 at the factory. It's, uh, that's uh, crept through inspection and uh, been missed. This is an 80 tooth gear which I was short of and uh, it's made of steel and I, I, I machined this myself, cut the gear myself on my uh, milling machine. And this is the uh, 12700 uh, intermediate wheel. And now this is from uh, RDG uh, I got this uh, quite a few years back now, and it's uh, it's really a well-made component. Nice job, the uh, whoever made these. It's quite heavy. Incidentally, I'm using rubber gloves, protective gloves, because it's always messy changing gears on this lathe. It always gets uh, covered in oil, so plenty of protection. I don't normally wear gloves, but uh, on this occasion, I need to. Now this hundred is used for uh, for fine feed, and the uh, the intermediate gear, which is uh, the eighty and twenty four, that's used for the uh, normal screw cutting of imperial um, threads. That's uh, that's a standard uh, component on the uh, on the boxford. And as you can see, I'm already uh, covered in oil, hence the uh, oh. reason for wearing the gloves. Well, this is the last of the gear, this is on the main drive. That's the 24 tooth. Well, now the 56 tooth goes on. This is the first gear. Uh, 
there is a space behind here and it could, because it needs to mesh with the 100 127 tooth gear wheel and this is the next is the 100 which uh, it faces outward from the headstock so it meshes with the 80 said before it can be a bit of a faff if you don't have a gearbox but even if you had a gearbox you still have to use a combination gear right now we've got the 127 and 100 spinning free I mean, what we need to do now is just bring forward slightly so it, uh, it meshes with the 180 and now that's to use a piece of paper to mesh the gears, put the piece of paper in between and then just gently bring the gears together and nip, nip together with the paper in place and then you've got the correct amount of clearance between your teeth, this has always worked this is what I've used when I was in the engineering for 45 years uh, and it always, always a good measure The same thing now with the other gear, piece of paper, bring the quadrant up, and that is the gear train all set and there's the 56 tooth first and it's meshing with the 127 and here's the 100 and this is the 80 on the uh, on the lead screw and this is the combination to cut 1.75 millimeter uh, metric thread on an imperial lathe Just now making sure that the, the part I turn is running true before screw cutting and everything looks okay. It's quite near enough, is that? These divisions are at uh, one thou and it's roughly about half a thou out, so that's that's near enough. Right, just now making sure that the threading tool's at the correct height, and then I shall use the gauge to uh, ensure it's square up against the. Um, the 12 millimeter diameter which uh, I'm going to screw cut I'm just now using the gauge to set the tool make sure I got uh, got the right one the uh, the metric which is 60 degrees and not the other side which is width width which is 55 degrees Let's ensure it's square and we get to uh, get the form correct. I'm just now about to take the first cut and I can check it with my uh, thread gauge then to make sure that the, the pitch is correct which is 1.75. And now just checking to make sure the, uh, the pitch is uh, as it should be and everything looks okay apart from the swinging uh, lens cover on the camera. I think uh, having a reverse switch on, on your lathe is really a useful item, uh, especially when you're doing metric threads like this, when you can't uh, disengage the half nuts and you've got to leave them permanently engaged.
Now whenever I uh, do any screw cutting I don't take swivel the, uh, the compound round uh, to the angle usually required for the form of the um, of the thread. All I do is use the uh, the top slide, I just advance it ever so slightly. Perhaps half a thou uh, to a thou depending on the size of the thread. And this enables the tool to cut on one side and gives a, a nice uh, a, a, a nice cutting action. And when I'm near the actual depth of the f of the thread, say ten thou or even less, I uh, I don't advance anymore. I just uh, feed down to the full depth, and this always gives uh, good results. And uh, and it enables the tool to cut on one side as if as if the uh, the compounds were being swiveled around. I've used this for many, many years and it's always uh, always been effective for me. I also use this method when I'm doing uh, internal threads, square threads, acme threads, just about any kind of thread uh, you can uh, imagine and it's always worked well. I use this method from being uh, an apprentice to, uh, to retirement in the uh, engineering. I will now just advance the cross slide about half a thou. Well, here's a closer view of the finished threads on the two shafts. Uh, nice little project. If um, if you've never cut metric threads before on an imperial lathe, give it a go. It's it can be a little bit awkward, uh, but once you've got the right gear in, it's it's quite easy. If you've got a metric lathe, of course, it's it's no problem. It's straightforward. Well, I hope you found this of interest, and uh, and thanks for watching.